passage that we're going to cover today is, um, is a continuation of what we've been covering, which is the Sermon on the Mount. So this is a sermon that Jesus gave. He went up on a, up on a hill, and he started talking uh, about the kinds of things that his followers ought to do, ought to think about, and ought to approach life with. And he gets to a point here in our text uh, where the topic is, don't worry. Yeah. This morning when we were having the servant leaders meeting, someone said, yeah, easier said than done. And I'm like, no kidding. Uh, so, so today's message that I want to share with you is about don't worry. And uh, as I was going through this, I thought, you know what? Why do a New Year's message that is special, it, it, this, this text here just fits right in. I don't know about you, but 2020 was not the best year. Then 2021 came and we started recovering a little bit. And then 2022 was like, okay, we're, we're sort of beginning to, to live with, with the stuff around us. And it's 2023. Today, what? But don't worry. How can that be? I'm going to read the text, and you will find the text in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 till the end of the chapter. Okay, so if you have a Bible with you, whether you do your electronic Bible like I do, I love my electronic Bible people. That's, I don't know, I mean, just you don't have to like shuffle through the pages and just go click, 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 you're there, right? Um, or you can have a paper Bible. Uh, today I'm preaching from a paper Bible. I, one, one thing I love with the paper Bible, just to let you know, I like to make little notes on the side. I don't know if you know if you notice, but I, and it's okay to write in your Bible. I know some people think, wow, oh, why are you writing your Bible? It's a holy thing. Well, because it's a holy thing, I'm going to write it. But, but you, know, I, it, you know, I have a bunch of little things underlined in here, you see. Um, and, and you should see my wife's Bible. She, she writes up everywhere. And it's a shambles. I mean, her, her Bible is like, it's torn to pieces, if you know what I mean. Of course, do you have it with you? Oh, you, did you bring your old one or your new one? You're, okay, here. I'll, I'll show it to you. Okay, all right, look at this. Look at this. First of all, it's, it's so well used. <laughs> you feel it. Oh, she got little notes here. <laughs> I better just give it back to her. Gorgeous, here's her. By the way, that, I, I call my wife gorgeous because she is. Um, it's just truth. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, let's, let's, let me read to you uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting with verse 25. And this is Jesus speaking to the people there. Okay? He's, he's open air, and he says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? By the way, um, some translations say can, uh, like something about can, uh, by worrying, can you add a cubit to your height? No short jokes. <laughs> I like that version better. <laughs> That's okay. God made you the fun size. Okay, here we go. Verse 28. And, and why do you worry about your clothes? So, see how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you a little faith. So, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or, or what shall we air? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Let's see first. 
Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Ain't that the truth? Each day has enough trouble. All right, my friends, so let's, let's dive in a little bit. I do want to share with you just what is this text saying? Well, first of all, Jesus, it, it, it goes after the necessities of life. The bare bones necessities. I feel like the loop. Okay, the bare bones, thank you, thank you for, for those of you that got that. Okay, uh, the bare bones necessities of life. Food, drink. Did you have a good meal today? Yesterday? Did you have water to drink, clean water to drink? Did you go somewhere where it was warm and you'd have to sleep outside and be freezing? Did you have clothes on your back? Notice that when it talks about the body, it is more than just physical needs. The clothes are there to hide. I mean, what if I showed up one day without clothes? Lord forbid, right? But there's a shame in that. So God handles not just our, our physical, He handles our shame too. So think about that. There's, there's more to this. And there's so the necessities of life. There's, there, and he says, look, look, look. God who's in heaven, your heavenly Father, knows these things. And, 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 and there's a bigger thing. There's a bigger thing than, than what you're thinking that life is. He, Jesus is saying in verse 25, is life more, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look, a bigger perspective. So Jesus is saying to his followers, look, people have one perspective, but there's a bigger thing happening. Just be aware. And then, and then he goes after, he lets them know about this bigger thing. He goes into all sorts of examples here. Man, there's, there's so many, right? There's the birds and flowers, and there's Solomon. Solomon was king, and apparently, according to, to the accounts, was one of the richest, if not the richest man. The wisest man ever. I mean, the dude had like 9,000 wives. <laughs> or 900. How many? 9, 000, no, 900. Sorry. I'm getting my zero to this stuff. The man had gold and silver and jewels and. I, wow. And he's comparing. Well, look. Him? I mean, the, these flowers here, they're dressed better than he is. So yeah, and then he gives another another um, example. It's it's it's, it's giving the payments. But like, look, everybody's running after these things. Every everybody that, that that is not my follower is running after things that, eh, in the grand scheme of things, eh, I mean, come on, people, what are you going to take with you? I just got this for Christmas. I like it. There's onyx in here. Thank you, Tom. Uh, been kidding. Uh, there's onyx in here. It's a precious stone, right? Onyx is a precious stone, right? When I go, I ain't taking this with me. True. And, and we, we don't take stuff with us. We came one way and we're just going to go the same way. And just say, look, hey, hey, there's, there's something bigger, people. There's something bigger. Don't be fooled. All right, so he gives all sorts of examples about, hey, go, you know, so there's a big picture. And, and not only that, he's giving these examples to give this powerful message. And the message is, you are valuable. You matter. You are distinct. You are set apart. You are special. You are... You know what we call distinct things that are set apart and really special? The Bible calls those holy. When the Bible talks about holiness, it, it, it's, it's less about being perfect. Okay, good luck with that. <laughs> I'm talking to myself, by the way. <laughs> when he talks about holiness, it's being set apart for something very, very special. And what he's saying is like, look, you are being set apart. You are being put into a place where you're going to be used, uh, not for 
this kind of stuff. You know, I even use for this. You see this here? This is where we did communion, and there's a nice little, you know, silver platter kind of thing. I don't put my steak on that, that platter. The only thing that goes on this platter is the communion. This plate is special. In biblical language, the plate is holy because it's only used for the most important. And God is telling you, every single one of you, is saying, look, you are meant for something that is very important. You're meant for me. You're not just an ordinary human being that, you know, you get kicked through the curb. You are meant. You are so much more valuable. So why worry? Why you worry? The king of the universe says, you are important to me. That's what Jesus is saying. That's his message. So it's not only just a bigger perspective, but you're valuable. And then verse 33, look, he's giving us a different and a better goal. You know, you think about what your life goal is, especially now at, at, at New Year's. <laughs> Jane was asking the, the family last night, so, what are your New Year's resolutions? I'm like, I don't know, right now I'm just going to eat something. I, I, I haven't even thought about that. <laughs> what are your New Year's resolutions? What are your life's goals? People talk about, like, you know, when, when they put things on that stone that, you know, you're going to be under it kind of thing. When they put that on that stone, what are they going to say? That's Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, you know, blur it up, man. Blur it up. <laughs> All right, people, when you're dead, <laughs> what are they going to say about you? What's your life goal? And the master that, that Jesus says, look, I'm, I'm going to give you a different goal. I'm going to give you a different goal, a, a goal that is so much more important. And here it is. It's, it's if you were to make your goal the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. And if you were to make your goal, the righteousness, righteousness means right living, the right living of the Heavenly Father, you're ahead. When you do that, if you do that, you end up living a life that is such a life that is not only good here on earth, but it's eternal. It will matter. I mean, don't you all want your lives to matter? I mean, who wants to live on earth and go, hey, 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 I waste my time? I, I live a wasted life. Nobody wants that. So, things that matter, by definition, are eternal. So, if things that matter are eternal, what we have to do is we have to start thinking and living living in a way that is eternity focused. And Jesus said, look, the goal, the goal is not a nice house, nice car, and comfort. Dare I say it? The goal is not the American dream. And y'all know that I love America, right? I'm a naturalized citizen, came to the States in 84 from communist country, so yep, I love America. But Jesus is saying, look, it's not the American dream. It's the kingdom dream. It's the kingdom vision. So he's saying, look, a bigger perspective is out there. You are valuable. And in order to live up to that value, seek that goal. Go first. Not that you can't have comfort in a nice house and good families. But the first thing you got to go after is his kingdom and his righteousness. And then he goes practically, pragmatically. If that's the goal, let me show you a better way. And the better way is to take each day at a time. One day at a time. Let tomorrow's worry be tomorrow's worry. It's not good advice. I don't know how many times I laid away at night thinking about, oh my gosh, next month or two days from now, or like, oh, and I'm, you know, I'm 
churning and eating myself alive. I'm like, ah, I can't sleep. And I'm waking up in the morning, I'm burning, I'm cranky. And I'm just, I mean, nobody wants to see a foreign cranky, right? Yeah, that's my thought right there. Each day of the night, practical advice from the master of Islam. So if knows, if God knows our trouble, and he knows how to, 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 to bring us into a bigger perspective, and he knows that we have uh, value in his eyes, and then he knows the, the troubles that we're going through, that means that there must be and his plan is getting put together. And even when, even when things around us are the kinds of things that are uncomfortable, horrible, he takes those failures, he takes those abuses, he takes those things that are difficult, and don't ask me how, but somehow he takes them and is able to transform those into his kingdom, his righteousness, or his heavenly plan. I don't know how he does it, but I've seen it over and over. I've seen it in my own life. It's the ultimate, when you have lemons, you make lemonade. Now, he's not surprised by the lemons. It's like, look, I'm going to make human beings, and I know they're going to fall, and because they're going to fall, when I plan to lose this, and all this is going to happen, and because of that, I really want them to be with me, even though they're, you know, messed up. So, if I'm going to create them, yes, they're going to be messed up, they're going to do all this, but you know what, because of that, I still want this, and I still want redemption, and I'm still going to send my son as a baby. By the way, you know, that wasn't his first visit to it, you know that. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I did a sermon series about Jesus in the Old Testament, not that long ago, okay? It's online somewhere, right, buddy? Right, right? Yeah, somewhere on YouTube, maybe? On our channel? Yeah, you, we have a YouTube channel. Subscribe, find it, you know, all that. It, 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 he is the one that says, look, I not only have a plan for you, but I have a way for you, and this way is not just 2,000 years ago, it's for us today. It's a really great way for us today. 21st century, 2023. Well, here it is. I have a few things that we, I think would be helpful to us. First, he's telling us not to worry about clothes, food, and all this stuff. But what I've seen is that we can endure hardships. As human beings, we can endure hardships for something that we want. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Ready? I'm going to say two words. Lambo Field in Wisconsin in the wintertime. More than two words. Okay, fine. It's a Lambo Field. <laughs> Lambo Field. Uh, human beings go out there and they're miserable because many of them are cold. And they're shivering. So they put themselves in harm's way. They put themselves in cold. Now some of them are just because they don't have to dress for the weather. All right, here's another one. Some people that like to look good on Christmas, and they will not wear a jacket, and they have a little summer dress. <laughs> I will not mention many names, right? But they decided that they rather look good, and they'll endure the cold. So they're shivering. Human beings can endure hardships when they want something more. All right, Jenny and I like to hike. And let me tell you, there are plenty of times when we needed to reach the summit. And I was tired, and my legs were burning. And I was hungry, and I was thirsty. I would have drank from a stream if I could, but there was no stream. We endure the hardships of hunger and thirst. Why? Because I wanted to see the vista. I wanted to get to the top. By the way, if you go on my Facebook or Instagram somewhere, you'll see an epic picture of me on the Appalachian Trail. Big old stone 
there's nothing there, and I'm like, you know, the boss. <laughs> All right? And, and, and several people are like, oh my gosh, Pastor, I would have been scared to go out on that ledge. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> but I endured hunger and thirst. So what this tells me is that human beings can endure hunger and thirst. So why are we worried about that? We can endure cold. So why are we worried about clothing? We can do that when we want something more. And that's why Jesus is saying, look, there's something bigger out there. There's something bigger out there. Live for the kingdom. And when you live for the kingdom, <coughs> so you live hungry. So what? So what? That's how people, when they're growing up in, under communism, that's how the Christian church under communism survived. So some of us will be put in jail. So what? So some of us will have to be endure jail, communist jail. That's all I'm going to say right now. So there's a bigger reason. There's a bigger kingdom. There's a bigger purpose. Second thing that I think we can take away is this: our goals drive our stamina, stamina and endurance. Our goals drive endurance. I am willing to let me give you an example. How many, how many families know that they will sacrifice for a, a kid's activity, fill in the blank, and they will wake up at five o'clock in the morning to go somewhere that the kids needed to go to, but man, on Sunday morning to wake up by time to be in church with other believers. It's uncomfortable. I need my sleep. Our goals drive our endurance. And quite honestly, as followers of Jesus, we all have to get a bit of grit. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of grit. A little bit of backbone. What's really important? The goals will drive your stamina, your endurance. So fix the goal. <laughs> All right, here's another application. Worry is never helpful on its own. I mean, imagine, if, if you worry, 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 what are you going to do? What's the result? An ulcer. You're going to have, uh, who knows, stress, panic attacks. Worry on its own does nothing. Put that worry into something else. Okay, I'm worried, Lord Jesus, let me pray. I'm worried, let me call a friend. I'm worried that we put it into action. I'm worried that my, fil my, my, my uh, uh, HVAC is going to go, well, I better check my filter. There's a practicalness. Maybe the worry needs to be channeled into, all right, well, what do I need to do? Well, you need to do your best. I love that video, Mike, by the way, if you play it up there. Do your best. Let the worry channel some kind of action. But then after that, you reach the end of what you can do, and you say, well, Lord, you do the rest. <laughs> Parents, you can raise up your kids, but you know, there will be a one point when it's their decision. You can do your best, and then let God do the rest. That's the scariest feeling as a parent, by the way. We have four, four, four grown kids right now. One married, so we technically now have five kids. By the way, that goes through all sorts of human relationships, not just kids. All right, practical actions. What can you do? All right, I want to talk a little bit about panic attacks. Those are real. And, in, uh, you know, that's part of worry, right? What do you do when you go, <gasps> and you almost feel like you can control it? I'll tell you what you do. There, there, it's, 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 it, it's not easy, first of all. It's not easy. But there are ways you can begin to, to reclaim that, that worry. You gotta worry about your body, mind, and spirit. All right, let's talk about the body. Worry comes. Okay, the worry comes. <gasps> what happens? Adrenaline. Heart. Short of breath. Pain. All sorts, right? If you're like throwing up or whatever the symptoms are, right? Focus on the easy parts. Breathe. Breathe. Can you stand up? 
and you sit down, okay, the motor, the motor muscles work. Can you put your arms out? Arms down, great. Can you walk? Yes. You're fine. Your body is fine. Breathe. But my mind is racing. Oh my gosh, what do I do with those thoughts? Okay, well, thoughts are going to be there. And you can let them run wild. All right, just imagine this, people. Imagine that we brought, brought uh, 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 like, you know, 30 baby goats in here. Okay? 30 baby goats are going to go -doo 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 -doo, all over the place, right? Start chewing on the hay, on the... I mean, they eat everything. I don't know much of you realize that baby goats eat everything. All right, so these baby goats are running all over the place. What do you do? Option number one. Oh, let them. Enjoy. <laughs> this beer right here is extra delicious. No! You begin to go after those baby goats and say, no, 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 little one here. No, you're going to go in this cage and in this cage. Oh, catch that one. And some of them you have to run after. And some of them is going to jump on you and you have to wrestle with it. That's what you do with your thoughts. Your thoughts are like little baby goats running all over the place. Don't let them. One by one, take them. And if they don't deserve to go to jail, put them in jail. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So your body's fine. You can still breathe. You can still function. Your thoughts are going to be like, baby, goats. fine. Start somewhere. It's better to have five baby goats than 30. Better to have 29 baby goats than 30. So start where you can. So from a mind perspective, begin to take your thoughts and decide for each thought. They may, you may not be able to, to, to kill that baby. Well, unless you're really hungry. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Kids, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. So, yeah, okay. So, take those thoughts captive. That's your mind. Okay, what about your spirit? And this is where you need to reach out. You need to reach out to other human beings that follow Jesus. And with those human beings, you need to begin to say, look, I need prayer. I need support. That's what we do the prayer wall. The prayer wall is all electronic. By the way, when we go in there to have some food, uh, you'll see it on the side. And maybe, you know, if I grab my laptop, I can even show you. We, we, the prayer wall has a place where you can see, this is my prayer. You just put it up there. And all of us that have access to it, get it. And you can say, I need help. Use the prayer wall. Now, if you're not technically um, uh, savvy, that's okay. Find somebody's phone number. Look around you. Get, grab somebody's phone number and say, you know what, I'm not a big computer person, that's fine, but can I call you when my baby goes already all over the place? <laughs> your body, your mind, your spirit. I have a lot more to say, but I better stop because we're going to go into another sermon here. We don't, we don't need to. When is the pack again? 3 o'clock? Yeah. Oh, we have time. I can go now, sir. I'm kidding. <laughs> My friends, it is critical. It is critical to your well-being in 2023. It is critical that we capture this worry and that we begin to live life with seek first the kingdom. Seek first the right way of living. How do you know the right way of living? You come here. We begin to have this, this discipline of, of, of hearing the word. There's Wednesday Bible study, not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday. And that's how you begin to, to, to have a solid core in you. Because that solid core, I don't know if you've ever been on a, on a, on a, on a, on a drill site where they go into the earth and they just mine all that stuff. You can't do that unless you have a solid core that goes in and pulls that stuff out. When you seek his kingdom and his righteousness, that's what you have. That solid core. And worry, it'll come. Just expect it. It's okay. Get a bit of grit and deal with it. A little bit together. Speaking of together, I'd love to have you guys hang out we have some yummy food. I have no, by the way, when we have food here, we never coordinate what food we have. Just so that you know. People just bring stuff. So sometimes, and you know what? 
why quarantine? Why, why have somebody have that burden? Oh, why we need more salads? And why, who cares? There's food, there's people, people that smile. Come on, how can you go wrong? So we have food there. I have no clue what it is, but by God's grace, it's there. And I have no clue if we have coffee there or not, if the coffee maker's up here or not. Yeah, we'll have to go get it. Whether we have water, there's, yeah, who cares? We will be together. Let me pray with you, and I'm going to invite you all in this room right here. We call it the room of requirement. Yes, I know. <sighs> That's okay. We'll get it eventually. Uh, so we'll call it, they call it a room of requirement. And we will just get to know one another. And if you don't know some people, just say, hey, my name is. You practice that. Hi, my name is what's yours. It's okay. Let me pray with you. Uh, Lord Jesus, our desire is that as this world throws at us worries and things that, that seem out of our control, our desire is that we would look to you and that we would seek first your kingdom. And that we would seek first your way of living, your righteousness, in such a way that we can see bigger things in your plan that you have for us. That we would feel how valuable we are to you as human beings, as your followers. And Lord, help us. Help us give us that grit, that stamina, that we can take one step at a time. That we may have our body, our mind, and spirit aligned with